Our Father, we thank you very much for this workers retreat. Thank you for all your children, all your servants, Christian workers who are here for the retreat. We pray, Lord, you help us to have the attitude to receive the best from you. That at the end of the workers retreat, we'll be able to look back and know that you've done something real and definite in our lives. Touch everyone and transform our lives. Do good in every life, O oh Lord. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. If you look at the program, you'll see what we should be having tonight. We are making a little alteration. The message you see on the outline tonight will be preached tomorrow morning, the first thing in the morning. Tonight, the Lord wants us to look at the word to prepare ourselves. Workers' retreat is different from general retreat. It's a workshop of the Lord where he develops and produces people that will serve him more effectively. And ours being the headquarters church, we need to produce, we need to reproduce Christ in a lot of people. So that the Lord will find people that he will use for the end time harvest of this generation. And so as you come for the workers retreat, you want to prepare so that everything the Lord wants to do in you, and wants to do in all of us together, he'll be able to do. Uh, that's why tonight I'm bringing you this message in preparation for the retreat itself. I'm talking to you on preparing to get the best from the Lord. Preparing to get the best from the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 64, reading there in verse 4. Isaiah 64 verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eyes seen, O God, beside thee, what he has prepared for him that waited for him. As you look at the verse I've just read to you, and you begin to think of the retreats you have attended in the past, maybe you can refer to some things that the Lord has done in your life. They were spectacular, they were supernatural, they were new, they were almost unexpected. But then, as you have been coming to other retreats, as there have been a repetition of that in your life, that what has not been heard, what had not been perceived, what had not been seen, that the Lord has done for you? Is it possible that God can raise up another Moses today and feel such a Moses with such manual power and send that Moses to a, super, to a community that had been close to the word of God and yet by supernatural signs and wonders there will be a way that is open and then that Moses of the present generation will bring multitudes out of captivity into the land of freedom and liberty. If that is going to be possible, it means that the people must be the people that wait for the Lord. Is it possible today? That in the corruption that pervades and uh, infiltrates the whole earth, God can raise up another Elijah and raise up a prophet of fire that will be able to go to the corrupt land and then bring the fire of God down upon the land and then there will be conviction of sin in the lives of the people. And multitudes in their thousands and their millions will fall down before their faces and say, The Lord is God, the Lord is God. If that is going to be possible, then you and I, all of us that are here, we need to be ready and prepared so that the Lord will know we are waiting for him, patiently waiting for him, so he can do that in our lives. You know what we teach? We teach the Bible. A supernatural message. The teachers in the world who are teaching secular message and they are teaching the, uh, the various uh, head knowledge, you know it takes them years before they prepare and before they are qualified and equipped to teach. If we then are going to teach this message that comes from heaven, how much time will it take us to wait in the presence of God so that he will fill us with everything that heaven can provide and then will be the able teachers, able ministers, able leaders of the New Testament. He said, for since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, they have not perceived by the ear, neither have their eyes seen, O God, beside thee. That is, there is a God in heaven, what he wants to do, only he can tell. But then there is a qualification for those people that he'll do those things for. And he tells us there what he has prepared, what he has provided, what he's getting ready to give to him that waited for him. It means then, if we're going to receive something from the Lord, not just for yourself, not just as a depository, 
that will just be a container, a cylinder to receive something only for your little self. We're talking about being a channel of blessing. We're talking of God raising up preachers and teachers and leaders. We're talking about God raising up soul winners and evangelists. We're talking about God raising up people that will take the gospel to the perishing world. If God is going to do that for you and through you, you need to wait before the Lord. Every part of us needs preparation. It requires sight now, my feet, my hands, my eyes, my lips, everything is made to do something for the Lord. And so the heart needs preparation. The body needs preparation. So that you wait in the presence of the Lord and you get everything you need to get so the Lord can fill you with himself and then send you out as a firebrand to send the world around you on fire. If you cooperate with the Lord, there's no limit to what he can do in your life. And there's no limit to which you can sharpen your instrument so that you'll be the sharpened instrument that you need to be. Unfortunately, there are people that do not allow God to do everything he would have done. And this is the record about the children of Israel in Psalm 81. Psalm 81 reading from verse 13. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. Here you find Almighty God himself lamenting that Israel, the people of God, the people he chose, and he wanted to reveal himself to the nations around through them. He said, how I wished that they would have listened to me, what I would have done for them, what I would have done in them, what I would have done through them would have been without limit. Isn't it possible the Lord could have been saying that about you and about us as a whole church? Oh, that my people are knocking unto me. Oh, that they had paid attention. Oh, they had given, if they had given me all the attention necessary so that everything that I need to do, I will do for them, I will do through them. Then he said, what would I have done? In verse 14, I shall soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hands against their adversaries. The haters of God should have submitted themselves unto him, unto Israel. But their time should have endured forever. That is what I would have done for them would have not been for a short time, a short period. It would have endured forever. He would have fed them, he should have fed them with the finest of wheat. And with honey out of the rock, not just water out of the rock, honey out of the rock, should I have satisfied thee. You see those children of Israel, they lost a lot because they were not willing and they were not ready to wait patiently in the presence of God that the Lord will do for them everything he should have done for them. And you wonder why the educational system in the secular is going down? Because the students in those educational institutions are not uh, ready to learn, are not waiting patiently. All they want to do is they are looking for expo and they are looking for how they can pay money so that they can pass their exams. They are not ready to learn. And you wonder why the same thing is happening in the church of God worldwide that people are not as deep as the workers of the past used to be. They are not as knowledgeable as the workers of the past used to be. They are not as fervent as the workers of the past used to be. They are not as effective as the workers of the past used to be. You know why? Because they are not ready. They are not prepared and they are not waiting before the Lord as the workers of the past as they waited before the Lord. Now you've sacrificed, you've left everything behind and here you are. You are going to inconvenience yourself a lot, you know, a little bit during this period. Wouldn't it then be reasonable that you will get something definite and you will know why you have sacrificed, you will know why you have, de why you have denied yourself, and you will know the purpose, the reason why you are here. You'll be able to look back to a worker's retreat like this and say, in that place, God gave me his fire. In that place, God equipped me. In that place, God prepared me for the service of the Lord more than ever before. Therefore, number one, we need heart preparation to get the best heart preparation to get the best and you know the heart is connected with the brain or the mind or the body with every part of you if you have the right heart you'll have a right spirit a right attitude and a right mind and the right thinking and the right approach and you'll be fully prepared to receive the best from the lord out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaking our actions are determined by what is what is uh, rooted in our heart Everything around us, everything in our action, everything in our conduct, everything in our character is, is associated, linked up with the condition of our heart. And so if we prepare our heart, every other part will be prepared. Heart preparation to get the best from the Lord. Oh, we have examples that have gone before us. 
In Ezra chapter 7 verse 10. Ezra chapter 7 verse 10. For Ezra prepared Isaac to seek the law of the Lord. And to do it. And to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. And the very first thing is that he prepared his heart and the goal, the ultimate destination, the thing he wanted to do is so that he'll be equipped and prepared to teach the law of God in Israel. And that, that's your purpose. You want to teach in the house fellowship. You want to teach in the zone. You want to teach in the district. And then if that is a goal, if that is a destination, then there is a necessary present preparation of the heart that must take place now. For Ezra had prepared his heart. You know, I cannot prepare your heart for you. You are the one to prepare your heart and prepare yourself and say, I'm here for a reason. I'm going to act like an adult. And I'm going to act not just like an adult, like a real Christian, a sincere Christian, a serious Christian, a Christian that knows why he's doing, what he's doing, why he's where, where he is. And because of that, I'm going to prepare my heart to receive the best from the Lord so that as I get the best from the Lord, I'll be able to give the best to the people that are waiting at home. If Ezra could prepare his heart, you can prepare your heart. It means that he knew the value of the work of God. He knew the importance of the word of God. He knew the weight of the service that the Lord had called him to. He knew the eternal value of the service in the Lord. And he knew it's not just like all the other things in the world, all that other people do in the world. And because this is a special thing, he knew that a preparation was necessary. Are there not people that do not know how important, how essential, how eternal the work of God is? And they are just there in the service of the Lord. And because they do not know the height and the length and the breadth and the weight of the work of God, then their preparation is shallow. Their preparation is superficial. They do not fully prepare themselves. But he says, Ezra, because he knew the importance of what God had called him to, it says he prepared his heart. Spiritual things are deep and it's going to take you time for you to patiently wait and dig deep until you strike the water. If you're in a hurry and you just want to get it by and finish up in time, you will not get what you ought to get. What you should stay in the presence of God for a single worker's retreat and receive. You'll be coming and coming and coming for many retreats and you will not get what the people that wait before the Lord, what they get. The Lord will not give you what you do not value. It's when you value this ministry, you value the opportunity you have, you value the necessity of preparation, and you wait before the Lord, and you demonstrate before the Lord that you know the eternal value of the responsibility He has given you, and you are willing to sacrifice anything so that you can have everything you ought to have. It's then the Lord will see that you have the hard preparation, and He will give to you what you ought to give to you. In Second Chronicles chapter 27, Reading there from verse 6. So Jotham became mighty. Jotham became mighty. Now we're talking about becoming mighty in the service of the Lord. Effective in the service of the Lord. Fervent in the things of the Lord. Being able to do in a short time what we have not been able to do for a long time. And the might is coming from the Lord. It's coming from the Spirit of God. Not by power, not by might, by, by my Spirit, says the Lord. If that is going to take place in our lives, if our lives are not going to be ordinary, if, if our lives are not going to be ordinary, if our ministry is not going to be ordinary, if our service to the Lord is not going to be ordinary, if we're not just going to be ordinary preachers and ordinary soul winners, ordinary evangelists and ordinary workers, and we're not able to do what others two are not able to do, if we want to be mighty in the sight of the Lord, equipped by the mighty power of God, is going to take something from you and from me. It says, so Jotham became mighty, what? Because he prepared his ways before the Lord is God. He prepared himself, he prepared his way. He examined his life. He didn't allow the moment he had there to be in the presence of God, just like another moment, just like another period. We've been there before, we're there now. There is no change of character. There is no change of conduct. There is no change of attitude. Just like we were, so are we now. So will we ever be. God will not be able to raise you up as a mighty instrument in the hand of the Lord. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. Reading there in verse 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. 
If you have read your Bible, you will know that the church in Thessalonica was a great church, a wonderful church indeed. But when Paul was writing to them, he wrote to them and he said he remembered without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love, your patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God our Father. And he really appreciated the church in Thessalonica. Because the church in Thessalonica, they were taught of God himself. And yet, we're reading about these ones now in Berea. And it says these in Berea were even more noble than those in Thessalonica. What did he say that? He said in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. They received the word with all readiness of mind. As you come to the workers retreat here, uh, you will need to pray to God very specially. That God will help you to receive the word with all readiness of mind. Uh, because you know, sometimes habits are difficult to change. If you are used to being in a hurry in the presence of the Lord, and your mind and your heart and your spiritual experience is not deep enough to receive fully from the Lord. If impatience has become a habit, if while we're reading the word, you're looking at the Bible and looking at your wristwatch, it has become a habit. And there is something in your body crying out saying, it's enough, it's enough, it's enough. If that has become a habit, you're not going to be an Elijah for this generation. But if you want to be a mighty person in the hand of the Lord, a mighty instrument in the hand of the Lord, and you want the Lord to use you for something very definite that the world will never forget, you need to change all that habit and then come to the place where you are hearing the word of God and receive the word with all readiness of mind. And then it says, they searched the scriptures daily. After hearing the word, they didn't waste time roaming about, talking about. They went back to the Bible, searching the word, reading the word, marking the word, underlining the word, and looking at the word, the thing that really struck them that was transforming their lives. They said they watched daily, the scriptures daily, to see whether those things were so. That's why we need heart preparation. A God will so change us and turn us around. And what you used to do in other retreats that you didn't get the best from the Lord, you will not do that in this retreat. Not because of me. Not because of any other person. Because of yourself. You want to become a mighty instrument in the hand of the Lord. What am I saying? I am saying there are hindrances we need to remove. That leads me to point number two. Hindrances to receiving the best from God hindrances to receiving the best from God. In Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33, reading from verse 30. Also thou son of man, the children of thy people are still talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses. And they speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, Hear the word, hear what is the word that cometh from the mouth of the Lord. Now, here is what these people at the time of Ezekiel were saying. What was important to them was not the spirit of God in Ezekiel or the content of the message of the word that Almighty God had sent to them through Ezekiel. It was just like, you know, the normal thing, the regular thing. It became a routine. Let us go and hear what he wants to say again. Look at it in verse 31, and they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them, for with their mouths they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And that is, there are some other things more important to them, more interesting to them, more desirable to them than the hearing of the word that comes from the mouth of God. In verse 32, and lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument, a musical instrument, for they hear thy words, but they do them not. In sincerity is an hindrance. If we're not sincere to do the word of God, to be yielded to the word of God, uh, you, you know that chorus, spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, melt me, mold me, fill me 
Why was he saying that? Why was the songwriter saying that? If God is going to use us, he will need to break us. He will need to crush us. He will need to melt us. And then he molds us into an image, into a vessel that will contain the ointment and the anointing from heaven. And then he says, fill me because it is a filled vessel that will be used mightily by the Lord. That's why as we come to this workers retreat, we want to take away that insincerity of just coming before the Lord and there is no willingness, there is no sincerity, there is no faithfulness to do what the Lord is asking us to do. And sometimes that insincerity occurs in different ways. In 1 Kings chapter 22, 1 Kings chapter 22 verse 8, And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah the son of uh, Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him. Here is a man. He knew that this Micaiah had the word of God, had connection with God, had link with God, had fellowship with God, and will see the vision of the Lord, and will show us the right way we ought to walk. He said, I know we can ask of him, but I hate him. For he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Joshua said, let not the king say so. We want to go to the battle in the world and there is danger waiting there and we need the directives from the Lord. We need actually somebody that will tell us where we ought to be, what we ought to do so we can overcome. You cannot afford to hate the person that will reveal the mind of God to you. Let not the king say so. Eventually he sent for Micaiah. Look at verse 16. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing? but that which is true in the name of the Lord. And you will think that now he had changed. Because now you see pretense. Oh, you said, haven't I told you many, many times that you shouldn't tell me anything except absolute truth coming from the presence of the Lord. And then eventually, this man told him what he saw from the Lord. Look at his response in verse 18. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he he would prophesy uh, no good concerning me but evil? That means he had what he knew what he wanted to hear. And if what he was hearing was different from what he wanted to hear, he will not pay attention. Actually, it's more than that. In verse 27, and say, uh, Thus says the king, Put this fellow in the prison, feed him with the bread of affliction and the water of affliction until I come back in peace. He said he didn't want to hear the word of God. But he told the man, he said, how many times did I tell you? Tell me the absolute truth from the Lord. And when the man told him the absolute truth, he said, I told you you will not speak good concern. I hate this man. Put him in prison until I come back. Are you like that? You say you want the totality of the word of God. You say you are a worker in Deeper Life Bible Church. Now we want to take you deep and it's going to take time. And then you are, you know, kind of stirring and you are disturbed. I didn't know it will go as far as this. That's what you are bargained for. Once you wanted to become a worker in Deeper Life, not shallow life, not superficial life. If there is resentment in our hearts or receiving the totality of the word, either we quarrel with the time that the preacher is making use of, spending, or we quarrel with the illustrations, or we quarrel with the interpretation, we just want him to read the Bible, no interpretation, no application, leave that alone, time is going. If you have resentment because of what you are saying, because of what you are hearing, you are not sincere in saying that you want to be a worker here, that you want to attend the worker's retreat. But we we'll remove that hindrance. And if we we'll remove that hindrance, wouldn't it be wonderful if the Lord does something He has never done in your heart, in your life? Wouldn't it be wonderful you go back to your district, you go back to your zone, and the people that hear you, they say, Is this our zonal leader? Is this our women rep? Is this our coordinator? Is this our local pastor here? This man is different. Something has happened. It will happen like that in Jesus' name. But if that is going to be so, All those characteristics of the past that hindered us from getting the very best from the Lord will remove everything. In Psalm 78, Psalm 78, reading verse 41. 78, 41. Yea, they turned back, tempted God, and limited the Holy One of Israel. Obviously, there are some believe. They limited what God could do. 
how far God can go. Limited what he will demand from them. They limited the Holy One of Israel. Are we falling into the same pit that Israel fell into? Have we come to the place where we limit the Holy One of Israel? We limit what he can say. We limit what he can do. We limit how much time he can take. We limit what he can say unto us. And that offended God. They turned back and tempted him. And God said they limited him. If there is something in your heart that limits God, that's an offense unto God. And if you want him to do the very best in your life, that limit, you'll take it off, you'll throw it away. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 9 and 10. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. And they do not want to hear anything deep, anything strict, anything that say, uh, you know, obedience to the word, the law of the Lord, they didn't want to hear. In verse 10, which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us true things, right things, but speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceit. Uh, you know, that's an hindrance we need to remove from our lives. Dictating what God ought to say. If you are dictating what God ought to say, you are taking the place of God. Now you are God, and you are you have equality with God. You can tell God what you want to hear, what is right, what is necessary. Any other thing from your own syllabus? No, we cannot hear that. Hosea chapter eight, verse twelve. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. And that was the blemish in the lives of the children of Israel. The Lord wanted to reveal to them the great things, great things, great things, deep things of his law. But they were not ready for that. And if we're not ready for the deep, great things of the Lord, are we still qualified to use the name Deeper Life Bible Church? The Lord is calling us then that we're here, all right, so we can get the best from the Lord. That leads me to point number three, here in a right to get the best from God. Hearing a right to get the best from God. In Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Reading from verse 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary. Which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Here we find Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus knew her heart, knew her attitude, knew her disposition, knew the, uh, the expectation of this lady. And uh, from the posture of this uh, lady, he, Jesus knew that this woman wanted everything that he had for her. Can Jesus see your heart now, your disposition now, your attitude now? Can he see that everything he has, no matter how long it takes, you are ready to receive? And then Martha complained. That Mary was spending too much time sitting down, hearing the word of God. There are other things to do. For Martha, the temporal, physical things are as important as hearing the word of God. But Martha was combated about much serving. And came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has let me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Tell her to stop just sitting down here, just uh, hearing the word of God. All that she has said, that's enough. There are other things to do. Tell her to stop and then come and assist me. Isn't that the attitude of many people when they come to the workers retreat? We're not going to read the whole Bible in one message. We're not going to hear everything deep, deep, deep things in just one day. Ah, if we want to talk about becoming like Elijah, becoming like Paul, we will not leave this place. We have not eaten. There are other things to do. Uh, this is what we are saying. You limit the thing. You say I have another opportunity to say another thing another time. That's the attitude of Martha. And that was not pleasing to the Lord. And when we have an attitude that is not patient in the presence of the Lord. And when you think about what we have been talking about. And watch myself as your leader, your pastor. 
What I've been telling you, all I'm telling you is study the word of God more. Pray more. Stay in the presence of God more. Give yourself to the Lord more. Consecrate to the Lord more. Be patient in the presence of the Lord. Obviously, you know, you understand. As I understand, what I'm telling you, that's the mind of God. If you have anything contrary to that, and you say, no, we don't want that. We're impatient. Round it up. We want to finish now. That cannot be the will of God. Then it says in verse 42, but one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Here the Lord Jesus said, what Mary was doing was the important thing, was the essential thing, was the indispensable thing. And Mary had chosen that part, which shall not be taken away from her. The Lord is asking then that every one of us, men and women, will be like this Mary. Amen. Maybe your name is Mary, but you're acting like Martha. Maybe your name is Mary, but you are not patient in the presence of God. You are not hearing the word of God. And you are not willing to soak in the word of God. But whatever your name is, the Lord wants us to have this attitude of Mary. Stay in the presence of God. Hear the word of God. Don't limit God. Don't limit the preachers. Don't have any action, any attitude, any kind of bad habit of the past that will be doing something that will make the preachers to feel maybe I'm going long. Let the preachers say everything the Lord has given them. Who knows? It may be that one sentence that he might have forgotten if you disturbed him. That will be the best thing in your life. That will be the key in your life to lead you into a breakthrough. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16. Jeremiah 15 16. Thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O God of hosts. Here Jeremiah likens the word of God to food. And when we eat, there are three things in the process that makes that food nourish our body, profit our body. There's appropriation. You take it in to start with. Mastication, you chew it so that it can become part of you. And then there is that assimilation, getting into every part of your body. Your words were found. I, I, I ate everything until it affected my attitude, my spirit, my mind, my health, everything within me and even the service of my hand. That's what the Lord is calling us to during this workers' retreat. That you will take the word of God serious. You receive the word of God as you ought to receive the word of God. And we plead with all our workers that all the habits of the past and the things we've been trying to correct, let's love one another, let's cooperate with one another, and let's uh, provide a free channel, a free flow for the word of God to reach out to every life and your life as well. We're working together, and if uh, you don't do your part, I'll not be able to do my part. Let's have the same mind. Let's have the same attitude. Let's have the same consecration. Let's have the same commitment to everything the Lord wants to say. That no matter what it takes, you say, I'm in agreement with the preacher. I know that in the past it might have been like this. It might have been like that. We are cooperating together. We are working together. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. If we will do this, the Lord will bless us tremendously. We'll be able to minister in an atmosphere of peace and joy and love. And the word of God will enrich our lives. We'll become more equipped and more competent, effective leaders and workers in the vineyard of the Lord. I give you this message tonight to prepare you for the real workers' retreat. And I hope that you will give yourself to the Lord. Let your will be bent. Let your will be swallowed up in the will of God. So that all our preachers will have freedom to say everything that needs to be said. And to do everything that needs to be done. And so God himself will have the liberty and the freedom to do everything that needs to be done in each of us. And anything you know that I had complained about in the past... As a pastor in the church, I have the right to complain about those things if those things are not right. This time, let's yield to the Lord and be obedient to leadership. And as you obey the leadership, you will submit completely and do everything so we can have a very important and memorable and effective, effectual workers' retreat at this time.
We don't have anything to gain spiritually by hindering or disturbing or distracting the attention of the preacher. Because that will not allow everything the Lord wants to give, to give it to the church. The church will be losing and you will not be an instrument of honor in the sight of the Lord if we do that. When we don't obey, it's like we're fighting the pastor, we're fighting the preacher. Don't fight. Let's cooperate and love one another. And you know it's the will of God for the pastor to direct the church and to direct you. Don't try and do what is not right. Are we going to cooperate? How many of you will cooperate? You yield to the Lord. You are going to yield to the Spirit of God. That God will have a chance so that he will move in our lives. And this workers' retreat will be a different kind of retreat. Is it possible? I said, is it possible? Why don't you rise up? And promise the Lord. You want to be an obedient child. You don't want to be a child of sorrow. You don't want to be a child of contention. If we're saved, are we going to be fighting one another every time? If we're sanctified, are we going to be fighting one another every time? Will there not be unity between the preacher and the members if we're real children of God? Talk to the Lord in prayer. Prepare your heart in the presence of the Lord. Prepare your heart in the presence of the Lord. Ezra prepared his heart. He prepared his heart to do the word of God, to learn the word of God, and to teach it in Israel. Prepare your heart. Prepare your heart. Prepare your heart. The Lord is looking at your heart. He's looking at your attitude. He's looking at your disposition. He wants you to bring yourself before the Lord. I say, Lord, here I am. 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 You want to prepare yourself so you can get the best from this workers' retreat. So that it will not be like it has always been. All those disturbances of the past retreats. All those distractions of the past retreat. All those things, the controversy of the past retreat. You know what you do. It's not good. It's not right. Hey, let's listen. Let's, uh, let's obey. Let's listen to correction. Uh, if your father has a right to correct you. Don't quarrel. Don't fight. Let there be love. Let there be obedience. Let there be submission. Are you not a child? Are you not a son in the ministry? Prepare your heart in the presence of the Lord. Time belongs to the Lord. Give that time to the Lord. And wait like Mary in the presence of the Lord. Wait like Mary in the presence of the Lord. If you are going to become mighty, effective, spirit-filled, anointed by the power of the Lord, you are going to submit yourself to the Lord. So that you will hear the word of God the way you ought to hear. And all those things of the past, we need to remove them. Let there be a different attitude in this retreat. Different action in this retreat. Different behavior in this retreat. Let there be humility in this retreat. Pride and stubbornness is not good. It doesn't befit the children of God. Limiting God is offensive to God. Limiting the preachers of the word is offensive to God. Whatever we are pointed out in the past that we shouldn't do, let that have be changed. Come before the Lord. We are in the presence of the Lord. And be a good child in the presence of the Lord. Bury those things. Bury those things. This is church, deeper life Bible church, we call it. Don't turn it to shallow, useless church. Don't fight with your preacher, be humble. Don't do anything that looks like controversy with your preachers, be humble. Don't be a hindrance, be a help, be a supporter, be an encouragement. Be ready to hear the word of God. Let God use you to be a blessing to this workers' retreat. 
let God use you to be a blessing to this workers' retreat. We have quarreled long enough. That's enough. Let God use you to be an encouragement in this retreat. We have not worked together in unity for a long time. That's enough. Let God make you an instrument of unity in this retreat. Has God spoken to your heart? Are you hearing what God has spoken to you? God will reward you if you are obedient. He will bless you if you are obedient. He will raise you up as an effective leader if you are obedient. He will make you a channel of blessing if you are obedient. Call upon the Lord. It's a workers retreat. It's a workers retreat. Let God use you to be a blessing to others. Let God use you to be an encouragement. Let God use you to be a supporter of the truth. Let God use you to stir up the preacher to preach unto you. Don't let the devil use you to be a source of discouragement. If you want to receive the blessing of the Lord, submit to the Lord. Are there hindrances you need to remove from your life? Is there insincerity in your heart? Are you despising the word of God and despising the preacher of the word of God? You say, I hate him. Don't be like Ahab that told Jehoshaphat, I hate Micaiah. I don't like his message. Don't despise any preacher. Accept the word, receive the word. You need it. It's what will prepare you for heaven. And this word is more important than material things, than food, more important than bread and butter. Prepare yourself to receive the best from the Lord. Don't be like those people in the time of Ezekiel. Show interest in the word of God. Don't be tired. Don't be tired. Don't be tired. Receive the word. Receive it with all readiness of mind. And then when we have dismissed the meeting, you go back to the Lord, you go back to the Bible, you pray, you read it again, searching the word every time. If there are some bad habits not allowing you to get the best from the word, let the Lord help you to break that bad habit. If you find yourself doing what uh, we have complained about before, let the Lord help you to break that bad habit. Any action you know you think we will misunderstand. Let the Lord help you to break that bad habit. Be an encouragement in the church. Be a help in the church. Be a supporter in the church. Don't let the devil use you as an instrument to destabilize. Any bitterness in your heart against your leader? If we have offended you, come and tell us so we can apologize. And then let there be love after the apology. So we can move the church of the living God forward. Be an encouragement.